Tonight, we explore questions about pain in our joints. And does cracking your knuckles really cause arthritis? I crack whatever I can crack. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's terrible. My hand can go all the way around. It doesn't stop here. It continues to oh. twist all the way, like 360, oh. right? If you think arthritis is a disease that only affects the elderly, well, think again, because we share the story of how three individuals had arthritis that affected their lives deeply at a very young age. When I was 12, I wake up with a stiffness in my body. I couldn't eat and I was like down to skins and bones and I looked like a skeleton and I thought I would die. Plus gout. We know all about it, but how much do we really know and what are the treatments? Find out on Let's, Let's Talk, Talk About, about Health. Health. Hey guys, oh, welcome to the program. So, Sonia, do you crack your knuckles? Yes, actually, I do this sometimes. Like, you know, right. get a nice crack out of it. it. Just feels so satisfying. I've never done it because my knuckles just don't crack much, yeah. so I just don't do it. I mean, my, my parents used to tell me not to do it. Yeah. Like, oh, bad habit, it might lead to arthritis. You know, right. you might be more right. prone to that. But is that really true? I don't know. Well, we're going to find out today because here to join the discussion about arthritis is Carla D, Chua and Lai, and Dr. Jess Lowe. Come on out, guys. Welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Anybody got arthritis here? Just curious. I've, uh, I'll try this. Yeah. No. <laughs> to everything. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. let's get cracking. No pun mm -hmm. intended. Oh, oh, do okay. you guys crack your knuckles? Yes. You, you, you do. do all the time. I, I crack my knuckles and my back <laughs> and like my, my neck. neck. Oh, my yes. neck. I, I crack my elbow too. I crack my it? elbow. I crack whatever I can crack. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> and how how often do you do that? Every day. Every day. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I, I don't. You don't? I don't. I mean, I do sometimes my knuckles, but that's about it. And I, oh, never my neck. So, Dr. Jess, let's get <laughs> to you. She's so done with us before we yeah. <laughs> Cracking your knuckles, is that a bad thing? Um, it's not a bad thing okay. uh, in general. But uh, that said, I mean, if you have pre existing weak or damaged joint, continuing to do so, may further worsen the joint itself. So it doesn't make the middle section of your fingers like swell up? It doesn't make it bigger. It doesn't um, increase your risk of arthritis. So yeah, wow. it's proven. So on that note then, what exactly is arthritis? We've been throwing around the word like we know it, but do we really know it? I mean, doctor, It's when you... your bone pain. Yeah, oh, pain, okay. Pain, yeah. That could mean when a your lot bone of things. Pain. pain. That's what it is, right? Yeah. Um, so, arthritis uh, is a condition whereby your joints inflame or it can be due to wear and tear changes, which is what everyone knows as degenerative okay. arthritis. So, some of the examples of inflammatory arthritis would be things like gout. Um, how come gout arthritis? Gout is the type of arthritis. How, how come? <laughs> I thought it was due to eating too much protein. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was like a, a rich person <laughs> yeah. problem, right? Like, like, everyone told me it's a rich person problem. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so it is a type of arthritis. It's a type of crystal arthritis. C sorry, crystal? Crystal, yeah. If you look at it under a microscope, the gout crystals are really, really pretty. And what, what is the most common form of arthritis? Um, so the wear and tear type, the degenerative arthritis, what we call osteoarthritis, that's the most common type of arthritis. And the sites that are most commonly affected are your knees, the hips, as well as the finger joints. Yeah. So um, can you show us with the demo here? Yeah, sure. This is a knee model. Yep. So this is the front part of the knee and this is the back part of the knee. So this string appearance like our ligaments and the blue thing that you see here is our cartilage, right? Mm. If you walk, uh, our knee joint moves like that, okay? So as time goes by, as we age, the cartilage gets worn out gradually, right? And when it is severe, um, then it'll look like that. Okay. That's thinned out, really. It's the thin blue out. bit That's is right. almost gone. That's right. What speeds up the process? Like uh, running? Yeah. Why, what running? should I avoid? <laughs> Exercise? Yes. <laughs> all physical activity. <laughs> yeah. um, so actually, contrary to popular belief, uh, running doesn't um, worsen. Oh, uh, nice. really? Oh, yeah. Nice. Really? Yeah. In fact, nice. studies have shown that those avid runners who runs regularly, they have lower risk of developing hip and knee arthritis. Than <gasps> lower than, risk some more. Yeah. So, um, you know, even though if you have early arthritis of your knees, it shouldn't stop you from running. But okay. in fact, um, 
just choose to run on softer run tracks. Right. right. So, so how do you treat this? Osteoarthritis, there's no cure. Most people have very mild osteoarthritis of their knees, uh, of their hands. So they may experience pain once in a while. And this can be easily managed by regular painkillers. Mm. But, you know, if it comes to a point where it has affected your regular activities mm. uh, and you're in a pain most of the time, then that's when we say, you know, you need to consult um, orthopedic surgeon. Well, what about like collagen, you know? If you oh, eat yeah. more no, those, collagen, um, will the collagen... Those, yeah, what do you yeah, call yeah. that? Those or if pills. you eat cartilage, will the cartilage uh, like go there? Yeah. There is no conclusive evidence that it's helpful. Oh. Mm. There is moderate evidence that chondroitin, which is derived from animal sources like beef or shark cartilage, did improve the uh, patients with hand osteoarthritis mm. just a little bit. Okay. Uh, but largely, the studies have been quite inconclusive. Mm -hmm. So, when people mention arthritis, you know, we hear a lot of do's and don'ts, but how true are these statements? We really want to know, right? So, let's find out. Now, if you get a correct answer, you get to stick a post-it on yourself. And we'll see All who's right. the winner at the end of it, okay? This is not a competition, guys. This is fact or myth. <laughs> uh, that sounds, sounds like, like competition. competition. Yeah, it sounds like a competition. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Yes. Okay, yep. Mike, with the first question, go. A cold bath or rain worsens arthritis. Fact. I don't fact. know, like, I'll say fact. I'm I'll gonna say, say myth. Okay, doctor? Sonia is right. Oh, man. What? <laughs> Are you That's serious? Right. Yes. I felt it in my bones. Why? Um, so, contrary to popular belief, um, actually, um, evidence doesn't show that there is a strong connection between rainy weather and arthritis. I mean, they claim that when it's rainy, it's cool. They feel more uh, pain and stiffness, mm -hmm. uh, but scientific studies doesn't back that up. Okay. Question number two. Okay. Eating prawn heads, prawn shells, and collagen is going to help with joint cartilage regrowth. I think well, we all she know. She said it just now. So no, that it's yeah, a myth. That's, that's a myth. I mean, right? I was paying great, attention. Great, it's good. all about cholesterol, good. that right, one, prawn okay. heads. Okay. Everybody, give yourself right. a sticker. Good. Okay, it's just flavor. Sure. Right here. Yeah, so, okay, myth. If you drink milk, it will reduce arthritis. I will milk. say milk. <laughs> Fact, because calcium. I don't think milk has anything to do with growing your bones oh, at our age. It's got it's to do with your bones, so I think you should, very should go with fact. Okay, she and myth. let's find out what the answer is. Myth. Oh, yes. Yes. yes! Oh, 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 this sucks. <laughs> Why is it a myth? Drinking milk doesn't uh, improve or reduce your risk of arthritis. Yeah. It does help to strengthen bones because it contains mm. calcium. Um, and calcium is important for bone building, which is not quite related to arthritis. This yeah. is important as a part, but not quite. All right, the next one is acidic food that can cause inflammation. Ooh, oh. acidic food. Um, okay, it's a myth. Um, myth, myth. Uh, okay, I'll do whatever. <laughs> uh, well, Sonia and Emily is uh, right. It's Boom! a myth. Yeah! <laughs> Follow me, guys. Follow me, okay? I, I, I'm All catching right. up only, you know. I've <laughs> okay, well, got one You know so what? Far, Somehow, so. it doesn't want to stick on me at all. <laughs> okay, <laughs> first, let's, I guess we should find out why. Um, acidic food like uh, oranges, citrus, tomatoes, it doesn't really uh, do anything to increase your risk of inflammation. But that said, um, certain highly processed food, mm. yes. soda, right. That's not great. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really impact arthritis per se. Okay. Uh, but I think overall... Uh, for cured meats, things like this. Yes, yeah. cured okay. meats. This, yeah, it's, it's not very healthy. Mm -hmm. Final question. <laughs> Rheumatism is a symptom of arthritis. Ooh. Uh, this is a tough one. I think I'm going to go with facts for okay, this one. Then I'm going with facts. <laughs> it's, just, it's like the same family. So, yeah, kind of the same. I'm facts. switching the myth. Um, so, it is a myth. Ah, yes! Sorry, I let you down. <laughs> Why is it a myth? Why is it a myth? So, rheumatism is actually more of a, a common term uh, that laymen people use to describe symptoms that they feel if they experience joint pain or swelling. Um, so it's not a medical term, it's not a disease or a condition. We don't use it. So rheumatism is actually not a symptom of... Uh... So what is rheumatoid arthritis? Rheumatoid arthritis? That's a good question. We'll so find out right after the break. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? You like that?
like that. I just set the audience up. <laughs> All right, guys, it's time for a break. And when we come back, we're going to share the story of how three individuals were affected by arthritis before they even hit the age of 40. Also, gout. What are the early signs and symptoms? And is there a way to prevent it? Stick around to find out. And welcome back to Let's Talk About Health. Most of us assume that arthritis is something faced mostly by the elderly, but in fact, young people, even children, can get arthritis too. Now meet three individuals diagnosed with arthritis during the prime of their life. Imagine that, and how this disease has affected them. Have a look. When I was 12, I wake up with a stiffness in my body. Yeah, I couldn't comb my hair. I couldn't dress up to school. During a holiday, uh, which I'm going for a break with my family, on the first morning, I realised that I couldn't clench my fist. And uh, that was the time when I uh, realised that something was wrong. It was 2016. It started with my knee hurting. So I thought, you know, maybe I overstrained it. Um, and then it went away. And then after that, it came back in a different place. It went into my jaw. And then my hand started to hurt. And then it went away again. So this was the very beginning of uh, the symptoms. I was finally referred to a uh, rheumatologist, confirms and diagnosed that I'm uh, suffering from rheumatoid arthritis. I couldn't accept it. I refused to take the medication because it has a lot of side effects. And my face would all turn all red and sometimes it would swell. I was diagnosed in 2017. My inflammation, my pain was like very bad. That it made me bedridden. And because of my pain, I couldn't eat. And I was like uh, down to skins and bones and I looked like a skeleton. And I thought I would die. My right knee was the worst. Yeah, so the doctor actually measured. The circumference of the inflammation was at 20 cm. So it's like the size of a baby's head. All parts of my body was like swollen. I was 37 then uh, and climbing the corporate ladder. I love playing uh, sports. Suddenly, it's something that I can't do with my son. When I went to the rheumatology department for checkups, uh, I was the only guy. This disease mainly affects uh, females, as far as I know. So I was sure that if I eat certain things, go for some alternative treatment, I can cure it. At its worst, I couldn't walk, I couldn't feed myself. Um, but I still continued going to work. And you know, you have to commute to work and you, I would take the train. And sometimes when your hands are inflamed, your feet are inflamed and it's all invisible. Um, you know, you really want that reserve seat, but you're also afraid of people judging you for taking that because they can't see that you are suffering. The symptoms actually worsened and I was bedridden for a month. Uh, during that period of time, uh, I had to actually see a GP nearby to uh, check what is actually failing. The rheumatoid arthritis uh, impact my uh, organs, which are liver and kidneys. I actually look back that, uh, that my kids are actually very important. They are depending on me because I'm, a, I'm the breadwinner for the family. And therefore, I had to bite the bullet and actually go back to the specialist to actually retake all the medications that was prescribed to me. The diagnosis was at least a direction in which I could go. I can either continue to wallow in my pain and suffering or I can use it to move on. Um, and, you know, it actually pushed me to be even better. The same year I got diagnosed, um, I, con I went and looked for information about my condition and I found Autoimmune Diseases Singapore. Um, and the support group actually helped me to find more people that had this same condition and it, it gave me uh, strength to know that there were other people like me. I love to cook, I love to paint. All these things makes my hands hurt afterwards, but I know now when to stop and not to exert myself. So I think uh, rheumatoid arthritis could be linked to a genetic disease and uh, I'm definitely worried for my children whether they will actually have the same uh, kind of scenario like me. Uh, the preparation is really to really save up more money you know, for, for them in their education. So that's what I can uh, do for them. More importantly uh, for the public, I think this is really generating more awareness to them to make sure that they know uh, they can actually seek medication, uh, medical help uh, quickly and promptly rather than wait and see. My hope is that for 
autoimmune diseases to be more visible and also that autoimmune diseases doesn't just affect people who are older, they can affect people who are young, just like me, or even younger than me. Wow, you guys, honestly, this was such an eye-opening video. We learned so much in that. I think there's so much a misconception as well, right? Yeah. Honestly, I, I very ignorantly, I always thought that it was like an older people yeah. conditions? Yes, for sure. Yeah. yeah, I didn't think that it could affect you when you're so young. And it seems so debilitating, right? Yeah. And I guess it's about learning how to live with it. Yeah. Right? So for, what is ex people. exactly rheumatoid arthritis? Um, rheumatoid arthritis um, is an autoimmune condition um, whereby it affects the joint. It can attack other organs apart from the joints as well. It can attack the eyes, the oh. lungs, the skin and the blood vessels. And I, that sounds like it can get really bad if, it if untreated. It can. Can we see with the oh, yeah. what it model? Looks like, yeah. So this is a model of the hand. All right. The pink area mm. is the lining of the joint, and it's inflamed, causing what we call pannus, which is a collection of thickened synovium. And over time, uh, this would eventually erodes into the surrounding bones and tissues. Uh, causing deformities. Most commonly in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, they may present with pain over the wrists, the knuckles, um, the small joints of the hands, especially the ones over here. It usually doesn't affect the joints close to the nail beads. Mm. And if you don't treat it, you will start to get deformity. So if you can see... The hand looks uh, yeah. offset. The fingers. Yeah, it's, it's um, bending in weird Correct. Places. So if you see, especially the second finger here, uh, we call it swan neck deformity. Because uh -huh. it looks like a swan. Yeah. Yeah. And this one, the third one, we call it like the boutonniere's deformity. And if you compare um, normal hand, and the model hand, you can see that some of the fingers are kind of like yes. deviating uh -huh. to one side. And this we see in advanced arthritis mm -hmm. uh, as joint deformities progress. They can get deformities and their thumb also form like a Z deformity. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, obviously, you don't yeah. want it to get to this level and early mm. intervention is always the best. Mm. So what really is the cure for this then? Well, again, there's no cure. <laughs> But there is very good effective treatment uh, oh. for rheumatoid arthritis mm -hmm. um, and that would help prevent further inflammation, mm. further joint damage and prevent deformities. But that means I... you can't go back to normal. Yeah, you can't reverse the effect. Once deformity sets in, unfortunately, you, you can't, it's irreversible. Right. What? Are you kind of like on an NSAID for the rest of your life? So actually, if your arthritis is well controlled, you don't need to rely on painkillers. Mm -hmm. I'm very hyper-jointed. Is mm -hmm. that what you call it? Uh, hyper... Yes, hyper Like you belong in a circus. Hyper yeah. I could, honestly, I could. <laughs> if see, I show see, you see, what I see. can do, let's I will go show desperate. Show it, please, gotta see it. Show it us, show it off. Firstly, firstly <laughs> my fingers can do this, right? Mm. Whoa. Like, I don't know if you guys can... Which kind of looks like that. Okay. Yeah. And then my joints are super flexible. Like, I oh, don't have oh, any bones. I have no bones, okay? I have no bones. And then, and then, look at this, okay? I have to get down on my knee. What's next? What's next? My hand can goes all the way around. Okay, this it doesn't stop here. It continues oh. to twist all the way. Like 360, oh. right? Okay, do not do this at home. And I'm telling you, yes. Kids, do, do not do this, do this at home. No. Don't do this at home, but it doesn't hurt. Like I don't feel a thing. So the thing is, my question is, because I'm so hypermobile, mm. will I be more prone to such um, conditions or diseases in the future? You may be prone to um, the wear and tear type of arthritis, if you're not careful, so meaning if you do it often, then that definitely can lead to what we call like secondary type of arthritis, mm. like wear and tear. But in the long run, it's not good. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we're going out for a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about another form of arthritis that most people would have heard of before, gout. So stick around. Welcome back to Let's Talk About Health, and now we're going to be talking about gout, which apparently is a form of arthritis, which I none of us knew. That. Gout yeah. out of here! Oh. I didn't know that. So my dad has gout, mm. and for the longest time, I've always thought like, oh, he just has to stay away from high protein foods. Like beer, beer is one of them, peanuts, 
So is that true or is it not exactly protein? So there are certain food out there that has high uh, uric acid content and beer is the number one culprit. Red wine is all right, but not beer. I think a lot of um, myths amongst people that eating tofu or soybean produce, mm. as well as peanuts, lead to gout attack. Actually, there are studies, including a local study, that showed that this is not um, true. Oh. Uh, in fact, plant-based food that has um, high uric acid content uh, is not as high as red meat, seafood or um, beer. So a lot of people say, oh, then, you know, there's nothing else left for me to eat. But, you know, you can have meat, perhaps choose white meat over red meat, or if you are a red meat lover, then uh, reduce the consumption. Once a week, I once a two weeks. I think about salmon as well. Is salmon supposed to be um, an aggravator or...? A little bit. Um, okay. It does have a slightly high uric acid content, right. cool. along with sardines. Yeah. So is this something that really generally attacks men, gout? Gout does affect men more than women. Oh, you mean women get gout too? They do, but they oh. tend to develop it later yeah. in life, uh, postmenopausal. Why? Oh. Why is it? It's believed that uh, the estrogen that um, they have is protective. Why is gout so painful at nighttime rather than during the day? So there are several hypotheses for this. Uh, they believe that perhaps maybe there's relative dehydration when you're asleep at night, mm. um, and this may precipitate um, or aggravate the underlying high uric acid level in your body. Um, another hypothesis is that perhaps the temperature is a bit cooler um, at night, and, and we this in aircon maybe, <laughs> and this yeah. can Which dehydrates you. Yeah, yeah and this well. can precipitate um, uric acid crystal uh, crystals forming in the joint. So let's say I'm at home, and uh, you know suddenly we get a gout attack. Mm. What do we do if it's in the middle of the night? We can't go down to CPR. the CPR. <laughs> you can't CPR my like elbow. You can't CPR my elbow. I mean, there is a there is a pill right that you can take, right? Um, yes, oh. yeah. So uh, the uh, first and foremost, rest the joint. Make sure you hydrate yourself well. Okay. You can put like ice pack if you have one at home. Um, and if you have standby painkillers, you can mm. start taking that. Usually, gout attacks takes about one to two weeks to subside. Oh my oh, goodness! Oh. I mean, of course, with the help of medication, it's faster. it is faster. Two weeks is a right. really long okay. time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because wow. can you imagine if you've like spent your entire life like knowing all of these things to avoid and all that, and then one day you're just like, oh, I've got gout, even though you've had like the cleanest lifestyle, you've yeah. been running that's and right. all that. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, that's, oh. that's horrible. Yeah. Wow. Guys, yeah. this has been a wonderful conversation. Carla D, we've got Chua and Lai, Dr. Jess, thank you guys so much <laughs> for being here. Much we appreciate for having it. You. We'll see you guys next time on Let's, Let's Talk, Talk About, about Health. Health. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to check out We Need to Talk About This on our digital platforms. Colon cancers usually occur when you're past 40 mm -hmm. uh, to 50. Mm. So 50 years old, that's why I got mine done at, at 49 years old. But you're right, increasingly we are finding younger people with colon cancers as well.